Howard Gardner, Frames of Mind, The Theory of Multiple Intelligences. Dive into the world of a frames of mind, the theory of multiple intelligences by Howard Gardner and explore different facets of human intellect that go beyond the conventional understanding. This book summary elucidates the limitations of conventional methods of assessing intelligence and lays out seven distinct intelligences, linguistic, musical, logical, mathematical, spatial, bodily kinesthetic, intrapersonal, and interpersonal. The author derives these intelligences from multiple criteria and emphasizes the potential of addressing them to enhance educational and policy-making opportunities in society. Beyond Traditional Intelligence Intelligence is a multifaceted concept that goes beyond the traditional methods of assessing a person's abilities. By acknowledging various forms of intelligence, such as linguistic, musical, logical mathematical, spatial, bodily kinesthetic, intrapersonal, and interpersonal, we can better understand and appreciate the diverse skills and competencies that individuals possess. Recognizing these different types of intelligences enables us to nurture and develop the unique talents and strengths of people across various fields and cultures, countering the limitations of our modern conception of intellect. Imagine a young boy from the Caroline Islands, set to become a master sailor, relying on his knowledge of sailing, stars, and geography. Then, consider a 15-year-old Iranian boy who has memorized the entire Quran and mastered Arabic, on his way to becoming a religious leader. Finally, picture a 14-year-old Parisian girl composing music using an advanced computer program. These three contrasting individuals have all achieved excellence in their respective fields, yet our current methods of assessing intelligence fall short in recognizing their accomplishments. Our modern understanding of intelligence is often viewed as a single, measurable quality, which limits its true scope. Instead, it should be seen as the potential to attain competence in various areas. The author introduces the concept of seven intelligences, linguistic, musical, logical mathematical, spatial, bodily kinesthetic, intrapersonal, and interpersonal, that encompass a broader range of human capabilities. To define these distinct types of intelligence, the author applies several criteria, including the potential for brain damage to isolate a specific competence. If damage to a particular area of the brain causes a loss of skill in one area, while leaving others unaffected, it can be considered a separate intelligence. Additionally, the competence in question must have the capability to solve problems or acquire new knowledge. The author acknowledges that this list of criteria is not definitive, as it attempts to capture intelligence across multiple levels of analysis, from neurophysiology to the environmental impact on abilities. Creating a comprehensive list would require focusing on a single level. However, this would disregard the importance of other relevant factors, such as the correlations between competencies and outcomes, or their predictive value in academic success. Despite these limitations, defining intelligences remains crucial in acknowledging and nurturing individuals' diverse skills and talents. Recognizing various forms of intelligence allows us to appreciate the unique strengths and competencies that people from different backgrounds and cultures possess, helping us to foster a more inclusive and understanding society. Unlocking Inherent Potential The debate on whether intelligence has a genetic component has no definitive answer yet. However, by focusing on individuals' inherent potential and the concepts of canalization and plasticity, we can enhance their talents and cognitive abilities. The theory of multiple intelligences can help educators and policymakers capitalize on these principles, leading to more personalized educational experiences and a better trained, intellectually diverse society. The extent to which intelligence can be attributed to genetics remains a topic of much debate among scientists. Some believe that a significant proportion, up to 80%, of intelligence score variability can be attributed to genetics, while others argue that it's a mere 20%, with some even asserting that intelligence cannot be inherited at all. Regardless of these varying opinions, it is more beneficial to identify individuals who demonstrate genetic potential in certain areas, instead of labeling intelligence as something purely inherited. Merely possessing the potential for a talent does not guarantee its development, 
environmental factors and opportunities play a crucial role in honing these abilities. The theory of multiple intelligences provides a framework to capitalize on people's inherent potential. Genetics can offer a starting point in achieving competence in various domains but understanding the complex interplay between genetic and environmental influences becomes crucial to maximizing an individual's abilities. Two concepts from neurobiology, canalization and plasticity, offer unique insights into human cognitive development. Canalization is the natural tendency of an organism to follow a specific developmental path. For example, human nervous system development is remarkably predictable, with cells starting in the neural tube and gradually migrating to their eventual locations within the brain and spinal cord. Meanwhile, plasticity refers to the ability to be molded or altered based on the influence of environmental factors. The brain exhibits a high degree of plasticity, particularly in language acquisition during early childhood. However, this adaptability tends to diminish as a person grows older. The significance of the multiple intelligences theory lies in its potential to make use of the inherent plasticity in young children's brains. By understanding their natural inclinations and abilities, educators can tailor educational opportunities that enable students to thrive. Additionally, policymakers can implement strategies informed by multiple intelligence theory to create a more intellectually diverse and adept society. In conclusion, focusing on canalization, plasticity, and the theory of multiple intelligences helps us move beyond the limited genetic versus environmental debate and create more holistic methods for unlocking and nurturing the inherent potential in every individual. Unlocking Linguistic Intelligence Linguistic intelligence reflects a deep understanding and command of language, one that poets and politicians alike possess. It enables individuals to comprehend the nuances in meaning, ensuring effective communication. Neurobiologically, linguistic intelligence is predominantly associated with the left hemisphere of the brain. Development of linguistic skills begins in early childhood and is a universally shared human trait, transcending cultures. When poet Robert Graves worked on refining a line in his poem, he agonized over the perfect word choice to convey his intended meaning. Eventually, he settled on the word call, which carried multiple meanings and established a harmonious alliteration. This painstaking attention to detail exemplifies the essence of linguistic intelligence. Individuals with high linguistic intelligence are not only adept at determining a word's potential meanings, but also possess an acute sensitivity to the interplay between words and their sounds. This mastery of language is not limited to the world of poetry, it extends to the art of rhetoric, wherein convincing arguments are crafted, and into fields such as teaching and learning. Neuroscience has extensively explored linguistic intelligence, revealing key insights into its development. From an infant's initial babble to the syntactically complex speech of a five-year-old, linguistic skills progress consistently across cultures. It is a universal attribute that fundamentally enables communication around the globe. The left hemisphere of the brain houses linguistic ability for most individuals. Consequently, Damage to specific regions within this hemisphere, such as Broca's area, can result in notable impairments to one's language skills. In such cases, the affected person might find themselves limited to simple sentences and expressions, hindered by an inability to apply nuance to their speech. In conclusion, linguistic intelligence is a vital aspect of human cognition that shapes our engagement with the world. It empowers us to understand and communicate complex thoughts, ideas, and emotions, creating a rich tapestry of human connection and expression. Unraveling Musical Intelligence Musical intelligence, the sensitivity to sound properties, stems from an individual's auditorial capabilities. Like language, it relies on our auditory tract, but differs in how the brain processes and stores pitches compared to other sounds. Although few become composers, most people can still appreciate music's basic structures, facilitating the ability to identify rhythmic patterns and appropriate endings. Picture three young children at a musical audition, one gracefully plays a Bach piece on the violin, another beautifully sings a Mozart aria after hearing it just once, and the last one composes and performs an original minuet on the piano. 
these three children exemplify musical prodigies, showcasing their talents through varying routes. The first child honed her skills through the Suzuki Talent Education Program, the second child has severe autism, and the third was nurtured in a musical family. Despite their different backgrounds, they all share a common thread, musical intelligence. At its core, musical intelligence is an individual sensitivity to the properties of sound. It is closely related to a person's auditorial abilities, which enables understanding and producing rhythmically arranged pitches. When linguistic intelligence peaks in the form of poetry, musical intelligence reaches its apex through composition. Although few people become composers, studies have shown that most can appreciate the basic structure of music, such as recognizing similar rhythms or judging appropriate endings for a given piece. Music may rely heavily on the auditory tract, similar to language, but musical intelligence is distinct from linguistic intelligence. The difference lies in how the brain processes and stores pitch compared to other sounds like language. This distinct separation is evident in a study conducted by psychologist Diana Deutsch. Participants were asked to remember a series of tones before being exposed to different sounds. When the additional sounds were other tones, participants had trouble recalling the original series and made errors 40% of the time. However, if the intervening material consisted of words or numbers, the error rate significantly dropped to just 2%. In essence, musical intelligence, the remarkable ability to understand and create intricate patterns of sound, is a unique cognitive gift. Although it shares some similarities with linguistic intelligence, the two are processed and stored differently in the human brain. As we continue to unravel the mysteries of musical intelligence, it becomes clear that this gift is not reserved solely for prodigies but is something that we can all appreciate and embrace. Unveiling Logical Mathematical Intelligence Logical mathematical intelligence, which focuses on abstract reasoning, starts from a person's interaction with the world of objects and progressively becomes more intricate as it enters the realms of logic and science. While a good memory aids in understanding mathematical statements, the true strength of a mathematician lies in their ability to follow intricate chains of reasoning. This type of intelligence is highly valued in Western society, although it cannot solve every problem. A young child discovers a profound insight about the concept of number when realizing that no matter the order she counts a set of objects, the total remains the same. Through this interaction with the world of objects, she begins to develop her logical mathematical intelligence. As she grows, this intelligence evolves, delving into the world of logic and science, and ultimately centering on abstract reasoning. An aspiring mathematician does not rely solely on her memory to recall long chains of mathematical statements or propositions. Rather, her true strength manifests in her ability to understand the logical links between these statements and grasping their overall significance. Similar to painters or poets, mathematicians are drawn to patterns and ideas, instead of language or pitch. Mathematics is incredibly abstract, requiring individuals to discover analogies between various forms of analogies, while navigating imaginary numbers, irrational numbers, paradoxes, and possible or impossible worlds. The left hemisphere of the brain appears to be the epicenter for mathematical ability. However, this understanding is still fragile, as logical mathematical abilities deteriorate with generalized diseases like dementia and uniquely affect children with Gerstmann syndrome, who face difficulties in arithmetic learning, finger recognition, and distinguishing left from right. In Western society, logical mathematical intelligence holds a privileged position and is often believed to dictate the course of human history. This intelligence is perceived as a singular logical system, exercised only by those with the necessary abilities. Despite this common belief, the author contends that while logical mathematical intelligence holds significant importance in Western culture and adeptly tackles certain problems, it remains incapable of resolving every issue. Mastering Spatial Intelligence Spatial intelligence involves accurately perceiving the visual world, transforming that perception, and recreating it, even in the absence of visual stimuli. It plays a crucial role in visualization, orientation, and finding connections between different domains. 
This skill is essential in various fields, such as navigation and recognizing patterns in the visual arts. Interestingly, spatial intelligence can function independently of sight, allowing blind individuals to develop this skill utilizing their other senses. Although spatial ability can be observed across all cultures, some cultures rely on it more, depending on their environment or daily activities. Picture a tall horse in your mind, and answer this, which point is higher, the top of its tail or the base of its head? Alternatively, imagine folding a piece of paper in half three times, how many rectangles result? These mental tasks represent spatial intelligence, our ability to perceive and understand the visual world, manipulate that perception, and recreate it even when the visual stimuli are no longer present. Spatial intelligence is critical for various applications, from navigating rooms to reading visual and spatial displays in paintings or sculptures. Interestingly, the ability can function without sight, enabling blind individuals to recognize sizes and shapes using their other senses. The power of spatial intelligence transcends these literal uses, allowing individuals to make abstract connections across different domains. For example, John Dalton combined astronomy and chemistry imagery to envision atoms as tiny solar systems. Spatial intelligence is universal, cutting across all cultures. However, some cultures make more use of this skill than others. For instance, navigating the tundra demands the ability to discern subtle differences in the angle and shape of snow drifts. One study demonstrated that over 60% of children living in such an environment, identified as Eskimo, scored as high on tests of spatial ability as the top 10% of white children. While most people may associate spatial intelligence with visual thinking, it can also be cultivated in individuals who cannot perceive certain visual elements, such as color. By harnessing spatial intelligence, we enable ourselves to navigate, recognize patterns, and connect seemingly unrelated concepts in different domains. Unlike logical mathematical intelligence, spatial intelligence deals with the concrete world of objects, closely related to another form of intelligence called bodily kinesthetic intelligence. Unraveling bodily kinesthetic intelligence Dance is an ancient form of expressing bodily kinesthetic intelligence, representing a culturally patterned sequence of rhythmic body movements. In Western culture, physical activities are often divorced from intelligence. However, various pursuits, both cognitive and non-cognitive, involve a distinct physical element, illustrating that bodily skill is inherently connected to intelligence. The brain plays a crucial role in refining and adapting motor behavior, while also being susceptible to impairments that can limit a person's motor abilities. Dance, a culturally patterned sequence of purposeful and rhythmic body movements, is among the most widespread forms of expression across human history. Dating back to the Paleolithic era, dance has served numerous purposes, ranging from reflecting social organization to expressing secular and religious ideas. Dance inherently demands the blending of qualities like speed, direction, and intensity, necessitating a highly developed sense of bodily kinesthetic intelligence. Western culture tends to separate activities of the body from intelligence, largely due to historical associations with reasoning and logic. However, closer examination reveals a strong connection between bodily skill and many pursuits that involve cognitive skills. For example, a surgeon's precise movements during an operation are essential to success, highlighting the importance of physical prowess in her vocation. Similarly, renowned hockey player Wayne Gretzky's ability to hold the puck for an extra instant and disrupt the game's rhythm demonstrates how highly developed motor skills contribute to a deeper understanding of sports strategy. Gretzky himself argued against dismissing such skills as mere instinct, citing the example of doctors, who are not considered instinctive practitioners of their trade. Contrary to popular belief, the brain is intimately involved in bodily movement, working in tandem with our physical actions to achieve specific motor tasks. Through constant communication, our bodies and brains work together to refine, redirect, and adapt motor behavior to help us better reach our goals. It is also worth noting that certain impairments in the brain, particularly in the left hemisphere, can significantly diminish a person's motor abilities. Conditions like apraxia, for instance, 
can hinder an individual's capacity to carry out a physically simple task, even when they fully understand the request and are capable and willing to perform it. In summary, the concept of bodily kinesthetic intelligence, embodied in various forms and pursuits like dance and sports, challenges the historical separation of physical activities from intelligence in Western culture. The intrinsic connection between the brain and the body in motor skills development demonstrates that bodily skill is indeed a form of intelligence. Discovering Personal Intelligences Personal intelligences, both intrapersonal and interpersonal, deal with understanding oneself and others. Intrapersonal intelligence focuses on an individual's inner emotions, thoughts, and feelings, while interpersonal intelligence revolves around understanding others' moods, motivations, and intentions. Both types of intelligence are essential for navigating life's complexities, and they originate from the same brain area, the frontal lobes. However, various cultures emphasize these intelligences differently, which can drastically impact how individuals express and develop them. At the turn of the 20th century, two paramount figures in the realm of psychology, Sigmund Freud and William James, gathered to discuss their viewpoints. Freud delved into the development of the individual psyche, describing people's inner workings. James, conversely, concentrated on how people relate to one another. This contrast perfectly exemplifies the two forms of personal intelligence, namely, intrapersonal and interpersonal. Intrapersonal intelligence pertains to self-awareness and the ability to connect with one's own thoughts, feelings, and emotions. A prime example of this can be found in the works of the introspective novelist Marcel Proust. On the other side of the spectrum, interpersonal intelligence encompasses recognizing and deciphering others' moods, temperaments, motivations, and intentions. Mahatma Gandhi, whose remarkable understanding of people significantly influenced others, embodies this kind of intelligence. Interestingly, intrapersonal and interpersonal intelligences shared the same neurological basis, the frontal lobes. This brain region integrates sensory and limbic system information, leading to a fusion of personal perceptions and emotional states. Despite this common neurological foundation, cultural differences significantly impact the expression and development of personal intelligences. For example, in Balinese culture, individuals are defined by their masks or roles in society, emphasizing interpersonal intelligence. By contrast, Moroccans cultivate both intrapersonal and interpersonal intelligence, but separate them into distinct public and private spheres. Unleashing Human Potential to maximize human potential, educational systems should embrace the theory of multiple intelligences by adapting teaching methods, refining goals, and understanding cultural context. By tailoring education to students' unique strengths, they'll be better equipped for success in their chosen paths. The mastery of programming a computer, for instance, can be approached through various intelligences. While logical mathematical and linguistic intelligence are evident choices, employing musical and spatial abilities can spark interest for some students. Similarly, students with strong interpersonal intelligence may thrive by collaborating in teams. To implement the theory of multiple intelligences into education, a revised system for intelligence testing must be devised, one that assesses individuals' abilities across different intelligences, ages, and developmental stages. This approach enables students to excel in their specific areas of expertise while receiving support in areas where they may struggle. Additionally, educational programs must re-evaluate their goals, swapping vague objectives for precise, measurable aims. When a goal is specific, analyzing the intellectual skills required for teaching and learning becomes more manageable. For example, instead of vague objectives like helping individuals achieve their potential, Programs should strive for targets like achieving sufficient literacy to read a newspaper or discuss a current political program. To fully maximize human potential, intelligences must be utilized as both a means and an end. This entails exploring the interconnectedness of intelligences in teaching a skill and being part of that skill. For example, a child who struggles with reading may find success through bodily kinesthetic exploration to understand letter shapes. Moreover, 
it's crucial for educators and policymakers to recognize the importance of understanding the intersection between multiple intelligences and cultural context. A prime example is when Iran's education system shifted to emphasize logical mathematical reasoning after westernization in the mid-20th century. This unexpected shift in priorities led to significant stress for students and the system itself. To revolutionize education, a culturally aware approach combined with multiple intelligences paves the way for unleashing the full spectrum of human potential. This transformation not only fosters a more engaging and effective learning environment, but it also prepares individuals to flourish in their future endeavors, ultimately contributing to the success of society as a whole. In conclusion, Frames of Mind, the theory of multiple intelligences presents a fresh perspective on intelligence by introducing seven distinct intelligences, each governed by different brain functions and applicable to unique aspects of human abilities. The author emphasizes that recognizing and addressing these multiple intelligences offers tremendous opportunities for enhancing education, training, and embracing human potential on a broader scale. This book summary invites readers to ponder on the diverse aspects of human intellect and question the conventional methods of intelligence assessment.